So what we're seeing increasingly in, in my practice certainly, um, given that I have a shoulder specialist practice, is an increasing number of people with shoulder arthritis. A and part of the reason I think it's multifactorial. One is that our population is aging. You know, 2011 is the year that the first baby boomers turned 65. And over the next 10, 15 years, we can see an exponential growth in the numbers of people over the age of 65. Um, and what's different, so we're seeing an increasing number of people over the age of 65, but we're also seeing is that these people remain very active. They're, they're not just sitting at home, you know, uh, on the couch. They're out there playing golf, they're out there being very active, and, and, they, and they have certain expectations of what they want to be able to continue to do. Um, and shoulder arthritis is very limiting. It's painful, it limits their emotion, limits their function. And uh, with a shoulder replacement, we can very predictably restore or eliminate pain. We can restore motion and get them back to a functional capacity. And um, I would say probably one of the most common things a patient says to me after they've had a shoulder replacement is that, I wish I had it done sooner. You know, people tend to put up with a lot more pain in their shoulder than they do in their hip and knee. The hip and knee arthritis, they can't walk, they get their, their knee replaced. The shoulder, they tend to, well, I can use my other arm, you know, and they tend to put up with more pain for a longer period of time. And when they eventually get it done, um, they're very happy with their outcomes. And um, so uh, that's an area of an expertise of mine, of shoulder replacement. And, uh, and again, you know, with being in this practice setting at the University of Maryland, where we do have the uh, um, a, a team approach with uh, uh, anesthesia, with the physical therapy uh, to optimize the recovery. Because the therapy is also a critically important part of recovery from a shoulder replacement um, and uh, allows us to, with a, with a team approach, allows us to restore these people to a um, good function of the arm and increase that quality of life. There's two types of shoulder replacement we do, and one is a conventional shoulder replacement where um, we just replace the arthritic portion of the joint with arthritic portion of the ball joint with a metal head and put a plastic socket. Now there are conditions where that doesn't work because, for example, the patients have a massive tear of the rotator cuff. So here's a model of the, of the shoulder, and, and the shoulder joint, the unique thing about the shoulder joint compared to the hip and knee joint is there's a tremendous amount of range of motion of the shoulder, and for the shoulder to work normally, we have to have 360 degrees of motion almost. Here's the uh, shoulder blade, um, the, the, the clavicle coming across, the collarbone, and then we have, of course, the arm bone, the humerus bone, and the shoulder joint, which you can, it's a little hard to appreciate maybe here, but the shoulder joint is really more like a ball and a saucer. So you've got, a, you've got the round head, but the socket uh, hidden underneath this tendon here is very flat. Um, and, and the reason that is, is because that allows us to have significant range of motion on the shoulder. So we can reach all the way overhead and we can rotate our arm almost 360 degrees. And because of, because of the flat nature of the, of the joint, the joint tends to be a little bit unstable. And what keeps it stable are these rotator cuff tendon and muscles. So the muscle sits here and ends in this tendon. There's one tendon here, um, and there's two tendons on top. I'm going to rotate a little bit so you can see that, two tendons on top. And there's actually a fourth tendon on the back. So the rotator cuff's got four muscles, one in the back, two on top, one in the front. And, and they serve, what, what I like to sort of uh, characterize almost as little steering jets, if you will. They, 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 when the rotator cuff muscles fire, they help guide that head to keep it centered in the socket and so it doesn't dislocate. Um, and if these are torn, then the head starts having a lot more play and a lot more um, instability, if you will, and that causes pain and can actually even lead to further tearing of the rotator cuff. When we're talking about shoulder replacement and deciding what kind of shoulder replacement you need, whether you need a, you know, what we call an anatomic or more conventional shoulder replacement versus a reverse shoulder replacement, it all depends on whether or not the rotator cuff is intact. So if the rotator cuff is intact, then you can get a conventional shoulder replacement. And typically, like I said, arthritis is some, something that does hit um, our older patients um, um, in their 60s um, and older uh, and have significant, so the people who end up requiring the surgery are people who have limitation of pain, range of motion, and function with arthritis. And how we do the surgery, is it is inpatient surgery. You come into the hospital um, and that morning of surgery you will stay typically for two nights and then on the third morning typically go home. We start therapy in the hospital um, and then there's a, a, a lot of times the early therapy is done really on your own at home with a little bit of supervised by the physical therapist. 
but it's a, it typically a two-night hospital stay to do the surgery. So the recovery time from shoulder arthroplasty um, is variable, but for the most part, certainly by three months, um, people have a significant amount of their motion back. For them to feel completely recovered is probably in the order of four to six months. But that's not, that's really to have their, all their range of motion back and their pain alleviated. Um, they're, like I said, they're, in, they're only in the hospital for a couple days, and after that they're on their own at home, starting a range of motion, working with their family, working with their therapist. The shoulder replacement, um, the results um, are very good. We can predictably take away pain and restore range of motion. And, and I think part of the reason that we have, have had such good success with this is, is multifactorial. One is uh, um, it's clearly there's a component of surgeon experience. Um, and uh, it's a procedure that I'm highly experienced in and have, have been doing this for about uh, 10 years now and have a significant amount of experience doing shoulder replacement surgery. Um, and it also, uh, uh, again, speaks to the, our ability to mobilize a team approach to this. We have expert anesthesiologists who do interscaling, who do regional nerve blocks to help with pain after surgery and uh, control that. And we have expert physical therapists who work with us as well. So, so I think that's the reason um, all three factors are very important in obtaining a good result in, in, in what is really a very technically demanding operation um, and, and, and one that's probably best done in an area that uh, does a lot of them.